Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki C., all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Super excited to be here today. Just a few updates we have here. First, we're going to give some shout outs to our sponsors, which is Jose Escobar with the Connected Leaders Academy, Patrick Rude with Rude Financial services uh julie and noah with breathe capital planning and emilio and Daniela roman with the author millionaire academy if you want to know no more about our sponsors you could go on to our website at www.buildingaleadershipmindset.com where we have a one-stop shop all of our information how you can get past podcasts uh interviews right at your fingertips as well as everything that we have going on with bomb global we have our next event coming out August 26. It's actually the five-year anniversary when I lost my brother to an overdose. So we're doing a mini memorial within uh, that mastermind. And it's all about showing up. Uh, that is our theme. And how are we showing up in every area of our, of our lives when we know life is just too short? So definitely touch base with me if you are looking or interested in knowing more about that event. It is going to be streaming. It's virtually. Um, so definitely connect with us or anyone on the Bob Global team. But enough about that. We are actually uh, coming to you with a very special guest that I had the honor of launching my book with uh this january 2023 uh, met him through the connected leaders academy first then through the author millionaire academy uh as we shared uh the stage together in a speaker competition as well as just sharing our story his, his name is benjamin john he focuses on mentoring individuals and business owners so that they can commit to greatness manifest their purpose and elevate their potential he has dedicated himself to influencing a positive mindset in entrepreneurs and those who have high ambitions to generate massive results in their lives and business with a wide variety of life experiences he has been able to clearly see what works well and what doesn't work well for most people. He was raised in a city that has one of the highest crime rates in the nation and was misguided for 35 years before becoming a multi successful business owner, author, public speaker and business partner with Grant Cardone and Brad Leo. He has faced numerous adversities and knows what it takes to overcome these challenges uh, that most of us go through. He teaches several strategies to become successful and enlightening, enlightens people of all ages on various aspects of mentorship. His message is purely clear. Without further ado, we are going to get my good friend on here, Benjamin John. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. And the intro was fantastic. I mean, that was kind of that was so lengthy and wordy, and I appreciate you uh, saying all that. Thanks yeah, for the warm absolutely. welcome. That's, we we want to know it all. We, we want to <laughs> know it all. And even with our bios that we share on these platforms, it's still not everything that we went through. Um, it's just a highlight. It's just an overview that, you know, sometimes we have our... Um, mess in our life that kind of leads us to that success, right? Um, but you can't get to that success without actually learning along the way. And I feel like um, it was very important to share um, everything that I've seen here when you shared it with me. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. And, and to, on that note, I don't want to sidetrack you, but I got to say this while it's on my mind in, in regards to the bio and the intro, what you did there and, and kind of saying everything. Um, it was bringing back, you're the first person to do that out of all the podcasts I've been on, you know, usually they're short and brief. Uh, but I appreciated this because it was kind of giving me flashbacks as you were saying it, you were talking about the adversities. I'm thinking about the adversities and all the things I, I went through, all the things I accomplished. So it was great to kind of hear that read back to me. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know what, again, like I said, and, and definitely not sidetracking, definitely topics that we have to talk about as podcasters and podcast guests so it's right. great to know that um that it, it made a difference in you, you know we've only been here about what four minutes um right. and it made a difference um instantly and that's what we are definitely dedicated to do here at bomb and really highlighting it because there is no way 
that we reach success without falling on our face a couple of times. And, right. and you talked about adversity and we all been through them. Some um, major than others, but in our own world, they're all equally the same. It, it's some stuff that no one was ready for, right? So tell us a little bit about who Benjamin John is. What are some of the things you went through and how did you really, when was the day that you really reassessed and said something has to change? Yeah, um, gosh. Well, so as far as the things I went through, right, I went through a series of things um, as a youngster from the age of three up until, you know, the time I actually was an adult going into business. And then I found different adversities. And so it's kind of interesting um, when I think about it and I break it down in that regard. And um, one of the chapters in my book talks about that, how those earlier uh, mentorships I got led to me being misguided in business and in life as an adult. So, um, but yeah, some of the adversities just like to give you guys uh, a, a quick rundown is, you know, I pretty much didn't have a father figure from three. Um, I think he was deported and never seen him again. Um, plus, he was just not a great individual. He really uh, kind of uh, terrorized our family. So didn't have that guidance growing up. And so I found myself being mentored by people who were not so great, you know, other misguided. I wouldn't even say that not so great is not the best way to say that. I would say other kids who were misguided. I was following people who were misguided, right? I don't know who they were following or where they modeled and mimicked the things they learned, but it wasn't, it wasn't good for me at the time. And I thought that doing that was the answer and the way to, to, to fit in, you know, ultimately that's what I was trying to do. But anyways, it got me into trouble, got me into juvenile detention centers quite a bit, uh, you know, as a, as a kid doing, committing crimes, you know, having a, a juvenile record, um, and then that just, it just kind of went in, in kind of a snowball. I didn't get mentorship at all. I really didn't uh, think about it or, or didn't realize I was being mentored or that even I was being a mentor to other people. Uh, and so it, it's been such an enlightening experience to me to think about these adversities and that switch. But um, yeah, fast forward into 19 years old. Now I'm getting introduced to drugs by my mentor and um, you know, the part about this story in my life is that I say, even though I was introduced to drugs by my mentor and it was completely my uh, my fault to hold myself accountable to that, the real tragedy and the real mistake I made was choosing this person as a mentor, not necessarily taking the drug at the time, uh, but that just kind of led to that, right? And so that I, I noticed that there was the mentorship in my life that led me into juvie, that led me on drugs for a couple of years. And then ultimately in my 30s, leading to struggling in my businesses. And so um, what happened was my life got really interesting at 31. I walked away. I was a carpenter for 10 years. Uh, this is where it gets really interesting. And after I don't want to tie up too much your podcast with the story. You guys will have to just check out the book because I elaborate on the story a little bit more and take you down the journey. But uh, made some bad decisions. I walked away from my 10 year carpentry job to uh, join the cannabis industry with a business partner because we thought it was going to be, we thought we we're going to be millionaires at the time. And it was the best decision to make money. And we were chasing money. She was chasing money. And I was looking up to her as a mentor because she had successes already. You know, she had the multi million dollar house on the lake, the jet skis, the, uh, real estate apartments she was into. She was very successful. She was into gemology. She really kind of was an entrepreneur. And I looked up to that, but the problem was she was very money driven. And so that led to problems that led to me being um, very bad things happened to me in this industry for that two, uh, two year period. I was shot at, wrecked my truck because I was trying to operate this place by myself. Um, you know, almost I jeopardized my freedom time with my daughter. And um, I ended up starting over um, with my daughter sitting in a room, um, renting a room out with my brother-in-law, trying to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. And that's when I started my own construction business. And um, someone sparked the idea to me, you should just start your own business. And that's when I started going into business for myself. I drew a logo that night. It's the same logo I used for my construction company five years later. Um, I really committed to it. And I ended up 
uh, it wasn't just like a, just to give you an a, a idea of what I meant by being misguided in business, that first year and a half, I struggled. I didn't know how to sell market. Um, I didn't know how to convert, follow up. I didn't know how to do social media. I was trying to do it all though. My taxes, you name it, payroll, uh, trying to do all that. And so once I got a mentor to help me in business, I turned the business around, scaled that to a multi-million dollar company. And those skills helped my life. And it got me into those, those things that you just mentioned in my bio, you know, got me into partnership with Grant Cardone, gave me the confidence to start coaching company, write my book, all those things. But I attribute it to those adversities that you were asking me to mention to you, 100%. If I hadn't gone through those, I wouldn't have uh, been able to, to challenge myself to do the things that I never at that time thought I would be able to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, we can get so consumed with the the adversities that we just choose to just stay in them and not really make a shift. So how would you really help someone who's probably struggling now in any of these uh, things that you uh, mentioned? Just like what is like that one key thing for them to kind of shift their mindset? Oh, there's a lot. When you say one key thing, I will say that's a challenge, right? Um, even saying top three things is a challenge because there really is a, is a layer of things and an arsenal of things that have synergies, right? Your commitment feeds your creativity, your, your creativity feeds your commitment, um, your accountability, those type of things that all kind of just feeds each other. Um, but having somebody... I, I tell that story. Uh, and like I said, I ran through that really quick. Um, and even in my book, I don't, I could literally write a couple of books just on some of the stuff I've been through um, and make like a bio. But uh, really the one point I'm going to hammer home is I got into some of those adversities because of a lack of mentorship, which really means a lack of accountability. What I mean by that, like someone there next to me, holding me accountable to the actions that are going to get me to, to the next step whether no matter what age you are, you know, I didn't have that as a kid and I didn't have that in business. And so with that in place, that's what I would tell somebody is that's, I don't know if that's the number one thing, but I would definitely say it's one of the top three. Um, and obviously I wrote a book on mentorship. So I'm going to say mentorship and having someone there more specifically accountability, having someone in your life to be like, Hey, are you doing those things? Are you doing this? Um, I think that's really what makes people, um, that pushes them to do more. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would 100% agree. That would be number one on my list, whether it's mentorship or a coach or someone to guide you. Um, and, and sometimes we're not going to know. We we take a chance on people and it's okay that we, we made a wrong decision, but now we learn from it because everything that happens to us is a teaching lesson, regardless if it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's always a way to either be able to share that experience. Hey, this is what I went through. These are the experiences and the challenges I had. Maybe you should focus on X, Y, and Z. When you're looking for a mentor, when you're looking for a coach, or when you're looking for a community uh, to be a part of, to kind of do life with, um, definitely have your eyes open and your, your, your ears open to the possibilities. But giving it a chance, it, it's the main thing because a lot of people want to do it by themselves. Um, all of it. Right. And we, you know, you've already attested that, you know, while you were doing it by yourself, just things weren't working. There were missing pieces to the puzzle and mentorship is one of the main pieces. Um, and, you know, you might have to go through a few before you find that right one that can help you level scale and all that good stuff that you're looking for. And you might have multiple. Have you had, a, was there a time in your life, whether now or in the past where you've had multiple coaches at once? Not, not like actively, uh, but I have had what I refer to as social media mentors, right? There's a lot of people that we all have uh, that we're being mentored by that we follow very closely or really kind of, I wouldn't say idolize, but, um, you know, we want to do some of the things they're doing, right? We want to kind of replicate, model, mimic some of the successful things that I want to do. You know what I mean? So it just makes yeah. sense that they've done it. I want to pay attention to them. So um, only on social media, you know, I think it's important to actually, and then, you know, I believe in too much information too, like in that regard, like 
what I found was I've talked to somebody on a different podcast about this, but, um, and I, again, going back to the book, I wrote a, a chapter about choosing a mentor, um, you know, what to look for and how to do that. But, uh, essentially what happened to me was I was following too many people and trying strategies and trying things that were recommended to me. And I found things contradicting each other, clashing. Uh, and that was confusing to me. And I was like, I need to really find out um, what I need to do is I made the decision to figure out who I'm the most in alignment with, because you're not going to agree with everybody. It just needs to be someone who's like clicking with you the most at a high percentage. Um, ultimately, for me, that was Grant Cardone. Um, and then the other person for me, like my social media mentor would be like David Goggins for mindset and like, you know, overcoming things that, you know, as he says, getting getting shit done. <laughs> you know um so yeah i think it's important to not have too many but some that align with you the most and really vet that when it comes to that in that regard vet them in that way um to make sure you're consuming their content uh, those people those people's content on a regular basis awesome awesome answer and i love that you bring up a huge point that i just wanted to share um a quick story about and that's when you said too much information can also be kind of a bad thing and totally true story i went in when i worked at this corporate uh job at age 23 i went with no healthcare background none people that i went in with had healthcare background so when we were in training um it was easy for me to soak up the inf the new information and make it my own versus someone that had experience at another company that maybe had a better way of doing it or maybe had a, a bad way of doing it and now they like this way so too much information they weren't able to receive the information as quickly as i was because i was able to absorb it take it in and produce right versus yeah. they're now kind of um what's that comparing it and now they're frustrated because the last place they came from it was just more smoother and now it's a little bit more hands on and stuff like that. So a lot of information can be um, can be too much information and getting a lot of uh, different ideas from different places can also throw you off your alignment. So great. Um, yeah, great, it can great, be confusing. Great. Yeah. So first of all, tell us the name of your book. Yeah. Uh, so the name of the book, let me grab a coffee. It's going to be backwards on here, but or maybe it's not. It's the misguided no. mentor. All right. Understand every aspect of mentorship. Essentially, what it is, is uh, half of it is a quick bio. I talk about a few of the things I already talked about and mentioned. And then the last half is um, some chapters where I uh, give my viewpoints of different aspects of mentorship that people may or may not um, be enlightened to. For instance, um, just even like the table of contents, like uh, having the right information. That's so funny. That's the first thing I read having the right information, stages uh, that people need mentorship the most, being the mentor in your family, um, how a mentor mentee will be, uh, relationship will benefit you, finding your purpose, how to find the right mentor, power of a great message, uh, unconscious mentoring, those type of things, right? How you're being mentored every single day you have been and you're mentoring somebody. So it's literally just me talking a lot about mentorship uh, and how it's relative, how it has been relative in my life and how I want people to open their mind to knowing that you have been mentored, you are being mentored, you are mentoring somebody, you have no choice in the matter. Now that you know that you can um, find out who you want to be mentored by and you can decide how you want to show up as a mentor. That's the beauty of it. I love that. That's a very different way of putting that into a book, a guide of, you know, what it is and how can you work it for yourself and for others around you as either the mentee or the mentor. So I love that. Um, how can we get your book? Can we get them directly through you? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Uh, you can follow either my Instagram, which is at Benjamin John M I C. Um, or you can follow me, uh, same thing. Benjamin John massive impact coaching on Facebook. There's a link on there uh my personal contacts in there but you can you can also purchase it through amazon whatever you prefer uh i will say i did an audio book not a lot of people did audio books and so i did an audio book i read it myself 
Um, and it was fantastic. So if anybody wants to reach out to me personally, I can definitely, and gets the book, I will definitely give them the audio book. If more people are into that, it seems like so myself yeah. included. Yeah, I actually prefer both. I actually love the book and the audiobook. So while I'm listening to it, I'm actually reading it, but I get to take notes with it. So I'm kind of mm -hmm. a, a dual reader and listener. Yeah. Um, but I love that you said that you did your audiobook and I did not. Very funny story. Um, as a, I, I don't know what it is, my breathing pattern or what, but when I'm like reading a book out loud, like I tend to yawn so many times, even with oh, really? singing. Yes. So when I used to read my son a book and I was just telling somebody this the other day, um, at a very young age, when my son was young, I used to have to tell him stories. Like I used to have to make up and uh, imaginary stories for him to like do that bedtime uh, reading for him because he's like, mom, like stop yawning. Like do <laughs> so I need to get someone to do an audio book yeah. for me. So well, um, well, here's, now, the, here's the thing though, Nikki, uh, if you, it's easy. Like if you yawn, that's fine. You could just redo it because all that stuff's edited, right? That you work at your own pace. So that the yawning uh, actually won't stop you from doing the audiobook if that's something you really want to do. It, it was fun just to give you a heads up. I really enjoyed it. So cool. Well, now you are encouraging me. See, you're mentoring me right now with, you know, this <laughs> happens just so instantly. Um, So I am going to try it. I'm, I'm going to try it. Do my own. I think my own voice would be great, right? If it's your book, it should be your voice. Um, so kudos to you. I can't wait to get it. I'm actually going to, we're going to have to have a conversation so I can get my hands on that for sure. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just been so awesome. The topic's been great. But we're going to take a quick moment. We're going to listen to our sponsor. We're going to come back and we're going to dive into more of what uh, Benjamin is doing now and how you can get a hold of him. So just one second. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Jose Escobar, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Connected Leaders Academy. We're a growing tribe a community of entrepreneurs all over the world, globally, all across the country, high performers, titans of industry. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to grow personally and professionally, scale your influence, develop your skill sets, move the needle in your business, more clients, more money, more profit, the bottom line, and of course, grow your circle and your network like never before, this is where you wanna be. Join the Connected Leaders Academy today. We are scaling massively, we want to welcome you in. Check me out on Instagram and on Facebook, the at symbol JASCO25. We look forward to having you join us. Take care. Hello, we are back here building a leadership mindset podcast with Benjamin John, who has been just dropping nuggets on mentorship and just really uh, being able to bring that into your life in one way, shape or form, whether being the mentor, whether being the mentee and the fact that we just do it every day subconsciously anyway. Um, so Benjamin, tell us what are you currently working on right now? Yeah, so I'm super excited. Um, so I gotta, I gotta kind of, I gotta uh, make sure I'm paying attention to myself because uh, I'll get too excited and just jab away at it. But um, I've been working on a my own uh, training curriculum, an interactive virtual system slash networking platform uh, for the last year and a half. I've been working on it. It's uh, it's taken a lot of time, money, and energy. It's called Massive Impact Coaching, a Massive Impact League. Essentially, uh, what it is, is a system that hosts a bunch of curriculums that I teach on anything from sales, commitment, accountability, networking, um, negotiating, follow up, hard questions. Uh, things are relative to life and business. Um, and the way I teach it is very engaging, very interactive. Um, and then the other part of that is uh, much like Connected Leaders Academy and a few of these uh, and Author Millionaire Academy, which we're both a part of. Uh, we also have a weekly uh, 
call that we're setting up, a couple weekly calls that we're setting up to get rocking and rolling here very shortly with all the members as well. So building that out. And I look forward to just connecting with as many people on as many virtual coffees as possible so that we can um, basically build a relationship because I, I believe that's one of the most powerful things also uh, that a person should be focused on as well is when it comes to improving and, and uh, helping people. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't want to disregard uh, the 10x sign you have on the back and we read it in your bio. Um, business partners with Grant Cardone and Brad Leah. How did that uh, come about? How do you, you know, was it something that you were going for or something that kind of just happened along your journey? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's the first time I got that question that way. So I appreciate that. Uh, my, so Grant Cardone is, like I mentioned before, became my primary mentor as far as someone I'm going to pay attention to more than anybody else. And primarily, uh, when it comes to business. And so I implemented some of his strategies It worked. And like I said, I was able to turn that business around from like making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to now multi-million dollar company, uh, to, uh, basically, uh, becoming a partner because I was presented the opportunity at an event that I went to while networking. Um, and so I just made the investment. The decision was, you know, it's not, it takes money, takes time. And, um, I was making decisions quick. I'm, I'm that way when I make investments, um, you know, and so that was a large investment that I thought was worth my while at that time. Uh, and so Grant Cardone, uh, became a third party validation to massive impact coaching. And so with that, I'm able to not only, uh, provide some of the products like tickets to events and um, services like that. Uh, but I could also um, coach and teach his curriculums. Um, for instance, we did a 10 X three, six or 10 X business boot camp in Philadelphia spoke to about 15 business owners. Um, and basically I did a grant Cardone style, had to follow the curriculum and it's super fun. I love grant Cardone as a mentor. Um, but so that's another add on to my system. If anybody loves grant Cardone, right. Not only, uh, I'm my own person, right? Um, I do things a little bit differently, but there is parts of me that uh, has Grant in it because I learned from him. Um, but yeah, you have uh, people that have access to me have access to Grant, which is the beauty as well when you work with me. That's awesome. Bradley. Oh, to touch base on Bradley. Uh, quite simply, I knew I needed to put out curriculums, and I knew I wanted it to, it to be different and new, uh, unique. And I seen an ad. I've been following Bradley for a bit. Seen an ad with Bradley. He broke it down. And basically was saying, you know, um, selling videos is, is not necessarily training. And he sold me on a system. Um, and so I made a huge investment with that. Um, and obviously it took a lot of time as well with money, but that's the system that finally launched massive impact coaching, but well worth the wait. Uh, the excitement is here. I mean, it, it that's the thing, right? It, in order to build something, sometimes it requires a little bit of patience, uh, but it's usually worth it, right? By the time it's done, it's like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we just never know. The whole point is, is that when we get an idea or a download or that gut feeling that you have more and you can give more and you start putting those plans in place, you don't just don't want to spit it out, right? You want to make yeah. sure, and, and I would never condone to make sure that it's perfect before it's out, right? Um, because you can start talking about it like as soon as that idea comes because then you're going to start attracting the people that either are going to be a part of it or are going to take you on um, for your offer um, that's going to walk that journey with you. So once you have it, figure it out, touch base with someone to say, hey, you know what? I have this great idea. And, and obviously someone you trust, a mentor, um, and you get those people in those different places so that you're prepared um, to kind of put this out there um, with, with such spark and, you know, everything that it's supposed to be. Um, so right. I'm glad that, you know, you've waited, you know, that's, and, and everyone's different and every new idea needs to be nurtured and should not be put out there unless you're a hundred percent comfortable that you can actually produce and, um, make it what it's supposed to make. And I love that you say, um, that your course is called massive impact because, that is actually my word for the year. I've never oh, yeah. chosen a word uh, ever in my life until like last year that I did for this year, which was impact. But if I had to sum up 
last year, it would be my breakthrough year, right? It was, you know, when I communities, when I started, and you talked about virtual coffees, when I started getting on these virtual coffees with people I didn't know, but instantly connected with because we had some, we we're on the same journey. We're all looking to see how we can win and how we can win together. When you get on these virtual coffees, like how do you nurture uh, those relationships and, and build those collaborations and partnerships? Like what is your mindset like going in? Yeah, that's a great question. My mindset going in is how can I help first? Like maybe there's something I'm so interested in helping people. So my first thing is like, I want to know what the hardest part of this person's life or job is. And maybe they could help me as well. So I'm also going into this with an open mind to receive something as well. But uh, yeah, I, that that's kind of, I think um, one of the things I would say is like, I want to, because I think providing value first is is very important in a relationship, I would say. Um, and so going into it, I would say is, is my primary focus. Like maybe there's a way I can uh, provide some expertise or something or suggestions that I, cause we're, especially if it, I've done something that's helpful to me, I want to share it. So uh, it just, I was just talking to somebody about this today, actually uh, when something works for us and is very impactful to us. We want to share. It. Yeah, of course. That's just the, the natural um response right like we go watch a movie and like oh my god this movie moved me it's like and i i didn't know that this movie can do that to you but i don't know if you watched the greatest showman um no. great movie i'll Actually, write it down though yes yeah, so it's with hugh jackson and um zendaya and a few other characters wow. zach efron and it's about and i'm not going to tell everyone what it's about but go watch it and i actually <laughs> well, well, i actually <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, when I was going to my personal development, uh, one of our groups, like we were going to have like a movie night and we were going to talk about what we learned at the, this event, what we're going to put in place to take action. And we were going to watch this movie to get inspiration, Well, we never got to watch it. So I ended up coming home and I was like, well, what is this movie about? So I went and watched it and the idea of being you know, a lot of people think that they are like the outcast. They're the the oddball. They're the black sheep. They're, you know, they've been through some stuff that kind of keeps them outside of the norm or what we see as norm, right? Yeah. And they really take on this um, ownership of their life. And they're like, you know what? You're going to get me and this is me and you're going to get me the way I am 100%. Yeah. So I love that. And just with listening to the soundtrack the other day, I already got ideas for like a next retreat, a next event that's going to kind of mirror what that is. So definitely check it out. I am just excited. But it's so I true it. that we, we there's so much potential for every single person on this earth. And this world is meant to be... Um, to be seen, like every part, every corner, um, whether good or bad. Um, and we have all a purpose in it. We all have to do our part in like really owning up and having that accountability, not only to ourselves, but be the best version of ourselves for others that really don't see that yet, but we're there to show them, right? So I yeah. love that you have this coaching program. I love that you have, um, and, and I felt like like last year was my breakthrough year, this year's impact. I don't know what my word is gonna be for next year, but it would continue to include all those amazing words, right? Um, love that. So I just love what you're doing. Love what you've, you, you've been talking about. So we have this membership, this coaching program coming out. Is there another book in the works? Um, what's going <laughs> on with that? So, okay. Uh, I was just, that's one of my goals is to actually get started on, uh, how do I put this? Yes. My second book, I got some ideas, but there's something, I will say this, there's something that's already happening right now um that may or may not lead to a book being published already so if that's the case what i'm talking about would be my third book but yes something may or may not already be uh in the works for uh something to keep your eye out for right. can't really can't really talk about it just yet <laughs> all right we'll keep it under wraps i don't know what get the about. green light it's not my fault <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> totally get it. But to know that there are still things like when we put something out there, 
we think that that's it. It's it's going to make us what we want, what we've always looked to uh, receive as being an author or speaker or anything like that. But there's so much more to the journey and the journey never ends. Can you talk a little bit about, um, uh, about that? And are you excited for the unknown, for the journey that's, you know, still ahead of you? hundred percent. I'm super excited. And just to put in context, what, how excited I am and kind of the things that have happened to me in the last few months, I basically moved across the country and made some sacrifices to go all in on massive impact coaching and, and kind of myself going, going all in on me. And so, um, kind of just made some huge sacrifices, walked away from a band I was a part of for eight years, um, walk, uh, collapsed uh, my construction business that I mentioned I built. Uh, it still pays me, but I took a haircut on the pay in order to make that move. And so um, I put pressure on myself. And um, so I love that. And yeah, um, that that's one of the things I'm excited about is uh, I'm excited, but scared, I will also say, right? being like, it's both. It was wow. most certainly moving across the country is, is scary and exciting for everybody. And so, yes, I'm super excited for wow. this program launching, new things developing, um, all these events I'm speaking at, you know, I'm just super grateful to be able to, I mean, speaking was something I never thought I'd do. Everything I, everything I ever start dove into, I never thought I would be doing. Like, I think I'm speaking at Connected Leaders Academy Global Summit in October. I'll be speaking at uh, Daniel Gomez's event in September, and there's another oh, event. So, awesome. yeah. So that's what September eighth and ninth sticker shop. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, I guess I will see you in a couple weeks. Exciting. Yeah, you're gonna be there. I should see you there. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm just super grateful to, you know, and it's just everything that you put your mind to. I want to use myself as an example. Um, you, you heard me mention I was in a band for eight years, right? I picked up guitar. I like, I need to talk about this. Actually, I was going to make a post about this. I picked guitar at 25. Keep that in mind. Like I, I just was like, Hey, I'm going to try this out. I like it. I want to get uh, into it. Next thing you know, um, I, at this point now, you know, I've, I've been 40. So I've been play, uh, playing for about what, 15 years now. Um, and so, uh, but the point is I grinded and I applied that principle to anything, right? I ended up playing shows with bands I was influenced by played a ton of like, like a couple of festivals even, and got to do a lot, you know, recorded some albums. We're talking about making a music video with an old song. So I'm just super grateful for applying things like that to everything and for the opportunities like speaking and, um, you know, those things that I really never thought I'd be able to do that I'm excelling in now and I get enjoyment out of. Very grateful for that. Oh my God. That's so awesome. Because when we go into this, when we have an idea, we, we, we set a picture, we set a scenery, a, a vision of what we would like it to look like. And sometimes it's just not that it's even bigger. It's even more beautiful, more flourished into something that again, like for instance, I only went to that May 14th event last year to just get in front of people and speak. Cause that's my ultimate goal. Did not know it was going to lead me to a book. Now, three anthologies <laughs> on top of that. Uh, a podcast that we're doing here that started with like a YouTube, uh, just audio. Then we got into interviews that there's always something bigger on the other side. And it's beautiful how it's been able to kind of fall into place. Has it been easy through the struggle? Absolutely not. It, it, it's been rough. It's been hard. There's days that you don't want to wake up and, you know, just be you know, doing everything that you're doing because you're exhausted or you've been on like multiple meetings, but it's beautiful when you just get through that and just do it anyway. So, um, growing pains, how, yes, right? yes, growing <laughs> pains, I love it. So, tell us how can people get a hold of you? I know you shared something on Instagram about your book, but how can people get a hold of you? And um, then I'll give you the final uh, few minutes to kind of. Uh, leave some lasting words for our audience. Yeah. Uh, so you get a hold of me. It seems like I'm more active on Instagram, like a lot of people. So reach out to me on Instagram, Benjamin John M I C all together. Uh, so at Benjamin John M I C or uh, like me and follow me on Facebook, which is Benjamin John Massive Impact Coaching. Uh, I think my numbers on there. You could you could reach out to me. Whatever. I like contacting people. I'm very direct. I send a lot of videos to people. 
Um, I'm sure you may have gotten a video from me. Everybody I know has at least gotten a, a video or several from me at some point. So uh, reach out to me. I'd love to hop on a virtual coffee with anybody and chat with anybody to develop a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So I have received when we spoke like uh, a while back, but even on Sunday, we got on like a mastermind call. Um, and as soon as we were done, you know, I had reminded you like, hey, I still need you on my show. And you <laughs> reached back out and you was like, yes, you know, let's do it. I got it booked. So I send you my calendar. And here we are today uh, sharing just a wonderful, wonderful podcast. You have been uh, just doing amazing things. I am honored to be in community with you. And now that I know that I'm going to be at more events, uh, you know, sharing that space with you and um, pulling from uh, the growth that we are going to do together. I, I'm just super excited about all of it. So thank you so much for now being part of the Bomb family. And you're actually up for our next 50th celebration because we're this close to 150 episodes in less than a year. And every oh, wow. guest, we actually do wow. a week long um, live uh, every day at the same time, bringing back past guests, just kind of re-highlighting them making sure that's like our give back because again when people are doing amazing things they need to get the platforms to show that and that's what we do here at bomb global um so i'm super excited um to see what else uh comes about all of this uh so happy for you thank you so much for your time but leave our guests with some lasting information that they can kind of take on right now and, and just make a decision to move yeah. So uh, real quick, I don't want to forget this. I got to give you credit to the podcast is amazing. I love what you're doing here. The setup is fantastic. I love Jose Escobar too. the uh, <laughs> advertisement in there. He that's my boy, man. I, I really connected with him, spent a lot of time with him and I like what he's doing. So I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that. So I guess that's a testimonial for Connected Leaders Academy. <laughs> not Connected Leaders you. Academy, get in there now. All right. That's my that's my testimonial. Clip it and send it to him. <laughs> I <sure> will. <laughs> um, but I would say, um, yeah, this is fantastic. I would say my last message for somebody is, um, you know, I already talked about accountability, so I don't want to beat a dead horse on that. I think you guys understand the, the importance of that. Um, and I would say networking. Let's focus on networking. I would say networking. Let me give you an example, actually. So you and Jose. Um, I think networking is one of the most important things when someone's trying to either build a business or uh, just in increase their, their network, build their confidence. It's just good for so many different things. I met you through a networking event. I met Jose through, I think, a virtual networking event. And we've just done quite a bit of things together. Um, it's it's led to more opportunities in life and in my business and really just getting around people. Uh, uh, one of the most important things it does is it elevates you. It, it demands you to uplift yourself. Right. It's like we're elevating and we want you to come with. All right. And that's where all that stuff comes in with accountability and those type of things. You just get around so many high performance individuals. So I would say the last bit of powerful advice I would say to somebody is. Uh, you know, obviously the mentorship is the networking part of it. You know, do, do some things to challenge yourself, get uncomfortable. Go, if you've never been to an event, go to an event, get on a virtual coffee. I just encouraged somebody a second ago before I got on this call, to send um, this girl that he has been dating a video message and he's terrified of that stuff. And I said, I'm going to challenge you and I want you to challenge yourself. Send her a video. You're going to stand out. It's going to show you actually care and you're going to, um, it's going to make you feel confident. You're going to feel better after afterwards. So all this is part of networking, right? Um, I would say take value to networking. And I even have a course on that. So anyways, if you like, if you like hearing about networking, mentorship, accountability, start following me because I talk a lot about all this stuff. So all of it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So networking is a huge thing. And how do you maximize on those connections, on those virtual coffees, at those events? It's not just going in there, getting the information, think if you're going to apply it or not. No, it's really like building those blocks between each and every individual because you just never know what that person can either offer you or you can offer them that can change both of your lives um, and so on. And, and it doesn't happen just like one off. There's multiple people that you can connect with at an event and just 
your life just shifts instantly. Um, thank Absolutely. you so much. I, I love everything that you said here. I'm going to have to watch it on repeat again. Um, and, and it's so true. That's exactly how me and Jose connected and how we were, you know, he uh, sponsors uh, this uh uh, Bomb Bobo, the podcast, and you know all our sponsors that have uh, taken in, or what I've sponsored, or what I'm a part of. It all because there is a belief, a trust in that circle because you took the time and they took the time to really get to authentically know each other, the mission and what you guys wanted to do as one, right? Um, and then as a community and so on and so on. So thank you so much, Benjamin. I've learned so much more stuff about you too. Didn't know you were in a rock band. Definitely have to connect you with my brother because he actually is in a rock band. Oh, you didn't know that? That's so yeah. funny. I didn't know that. Oh my God. And, and, maybe, and maybe I'll make that post because uh, I don't know. I, here's a limiting belief I'm exposed to everybody. Um, they, somewhere I heard it, you know, back along the lines that I shouldn't post things like that, like me playing uh, metal music on my business page. And so I haven't, but lately I was like, I had a couple of pictures I was thinking about posting, especially now that I'm not in the band. I haven't been in it in a few months now, but that was a huge part of my life, eight years. You know the same exact band that i built you know we we did so many things but yeah yeah i'm surprised you didn't know that about me because uh going to some of the events that's uh, some people only know me for that and they always bring it up they're like i can't believe you play in that in a metal band and you're a business guy and so it's kind of a funny conversation yeah absolutely i say post it because i want to see it i want to read it i want to do my investigation my research um so definitely do that and i know people say like we need to be authentically real like yeah it's not just about a suit um a blazer it's not just about you know prepping for that speech it's all about the person inside the whole person like we all have hobbies and likes and things that we need to share because that's also how you can connect with people on that level if they're not that sue and tie person but they see you in a rock band they're like dude if he's doing both of these things i can do it too so i say hundred percent i say post it never hide your true authentic self uh, no matter what it is our life is our business page like every part of it um, because they're going to want to do business with people they can relate to. So I say go for it. Thank you so much, Benjamin. This has been awesome. You definitely rocked it. Thank you to the listeners for listening to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. Hope you watch this on repeat as well. Share it with your friends and subscribe, like, comment uh, below. Absolutely love you guys for your continued support. And as I always say, have a great day and make it count. Bye.